Well, welcome everyone. I'm Roger. I'm Albina. And we're the Rippies. And welcome to Love Revolution. Um, this is a big honor for us uh, to be able to do this together. And, and Love Revolution is uh, based on a book, for those of you who don't know, that I wrote. Um, and it was really designed to be a program, like a book club, that we could kind of do together as a program. And, and the intention being um, something really meaningful and transformational and powerful that we could all do together as a group. And so, you know, we've led this a few times and, uh, and we've also had various people from different places all over the world do it with us. And so now you're joining a community of people who, who have stepped into this space of transformation, of exploration. And really what we get to do for the next three weeks is step into that space together. Do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Go so the idea is it's a 21-day program, kicks off with today's, you know, call and then we'll have a call um, at this same time for the next three weeks three more weeks just to check in see how we're doing and so some of the work you're going to do on your own and then we can come back together and have a little check in to see how it's going and i know that when i when when i wrote this book my intention was to have something new communal that that we, at the same time it's not so much about um, the asana practice, it's the other parts of yoga. Um, the Bhagavad Gita, which is like one of the key, key pieces of literature in, in, the, in the yoga tradition said that yoga is the journey of the self through the self to the self. Like when you see people bending themselves into shapes and whatnot, um, part of that is to, you're exploring your body, you're exploring, some of you have felt in a class, like emotions will arise, things will arise, right? And, and then the, the work of yoga is to take what's arising and transform it into a positive, you know, to, toward a positive force. So, you know, we kind of do this at the beginning of the year, typically, because it's a great time. I mean, always it's a great time to start again, whether that's the beginning of the year or whether that's the middle of the year or whether that's tomorrow. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity every day to wake up and start again. And this sort of gives us a path that we can walk together for three weeks and say, okay, we're gonna do, try this thing on and see how it works. Um, and so it's broken, into, it's, broken in, it's broken up in two ways. One is it's broken into three distinct weeks. So there's a week one, you kind of take a look, kind of 360 degree look at your life and where it's working amazingly and it's going swimmingly and it's going beautifully. And then maybe places where, hey, I've got some work I want to do here, you know? And it could be that one area of your life is like doing great, right? Like I'm doing great with my relationship or I'm doing great with work and then Maybe because I'm putting so much attention on one, you know, and what's my relationship to my body or to myself or, you know, these things. So we take, we first week, we take a look at, at everything. And then the next week, um, so in order to change anything, you have to be aware of it, right? <laughs> and you get to decide, like, once you kind of see what's going on in your life from a slightly um, 10,000 foot view and, and also in a very intimate way, once you can have an oversight into what's going on, then you can kind of say, all right, this is going, I'm not going to jack with that. Or actually, I want to do some work here and see if there's an upgrade that I can take. In other words, it might actually be going pretty good and there's still another level. Does that make sense? Like, it's not to say there's anything wrong. And in fact, that's one of the premises of this whole thing is that nothing's wrong. And we, we have these opportunities to take an upgrade, right? The iPhone, your iPhone's working great, but they send you an upgrade anyway. <laughs> Sometimes it, you don't like the upgrade. But anyway, the, the point is that it doesn't mean anything's wrong. 
And then the things in the second week, the things that used to transform, you take the on and do some work. The second week is about trans that that's some that's some deep work, right? Like I'm gonna change this thing or I'm going to in this direction. Then the last week is, okay, I, I've made the choice. How am I going to live that? What are the practices? What are the insurance policies? What are the things that I need to do in order to bring this new direction into my life and keep it in my life? And, and arguably, that's what the yoga practice is about, actually. Um, I've heard it said that the yoga practice is, is the gradual changing of less healthy habits to more and more healthy habits. You're just replacing habits all the time, right? And such that you're, you're always working on, um, you know, is this habit working for me or is it not working for me? And if not, how can I, how can I work with it and so that I'm choosing healthier and healthier habits? May I add something? Mm -hmm. But what I want to add is that, I think it was Tony Robbins who said, if you want the results, you must have the discipline. So in any area of your of your life, if you want results, you must have the discipline. And this 21 day program, the reason why it's 21 days is because the research shows us that it takes on average 21 days to create a new habit. So the program is rooted in yoga or any sort of physical movement, meditation, daily readings, and self-inquiry questions. And we do it, and you could perfectly do this program on your own in the comfort of your own home. And there is something magical when we do this together. Mm -hmm. And we show up every week, every Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. Mm -hmm. And we do it together, and we support each other, and we share with each other. And and we really encourage each other to keep doing the work. And as a result of this, yes, it will take some discipline. It will take commitment. And as a result, I promise you, if you commit to this program, your whole life can transform for the better. Mm -hmm. And Roger and I have been leading programs like this for over a decade now. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of people report every year, this program changed my life. This program changed my life. This is how I stepped on this path of self-growth, of transformation, of creating my life, shaping my destiny and improving every area of my life. This is it. This is how we start. And a big part of it is trusting the process, trusting that the simple things like daily movement, daily yoga, five minutes of meditation, reading from Roger's book, and those few journaling questions, if you just commit and do it every day, I promise you, at the end of the 21-day journey, you're going to be in a completely different place. Yeah, so that's the stakes, you know, that can, <laughs> that can totally happen, and it's obviously up to you to do the work. And, you know, I will say that this isn't easy work. This is like asking yourself some challenging questions. And, and if in our challenges is when we grow, right? So we're intentionally putting ourselves in, you know, when we do this reading, it's like, it's going to ask us some, some introspective questions that are geared toward doing some deep self-inquiry. And by doing that deep self-inquiry, you get insight, right? And through the insight, you can do something with what comes up. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, really this, this book is, and these practices are a culmination of all the yoga I've done for the last 22 years now. And, you know, yoga is a super broad, expansive, never ending, unfolding thing that you can study your whole life. And my friend put it really, he's a really uh, got away with words. My friend, John Cooker said, you know, I really appreciate that like, this is you, you know, take, trying to take a drink from the fire hydrant, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of yoga and like, this is me distilling it in a way that this is the stuff that has worked to change my life. And I'm sharing, we're sharing it with you. And so everything in here is the stuff that I know works for me. 
you know, some, some other things in yoga, you know, like some practices maybe don't work as much, or I don't know enough about to talk about, but these are the, these are the principles and the practices and the, and the self-inquiry questions that have helped me grow, helped us grow as a couple. And, you know, the, that's a never ending process, you know, just because we do the work once doesn't mean we're done with it. <laughs> it means, it means now we have another layer of, uh, We've, we've grown out of our shell a little bit and then and then what's next is kind of how that tends to go right it's like you get you get out of your comfort zone you grow and then you suddenly find yourself over time in a new comfort zone and then it's time to grow again so that's how it's set up and so it's yoga or some sort of movement it doesn't have to be yoga you can do it at home you can do our videos on albina's website you can do it in your studio for the people in, you know, they have a studio there in Albuquerque at Ashley Studio. Yes. Um, and that's a great way to do it. And then, and then meditation, you can do the meditations that we'll send you um, in the links. You can do meditation on your favorite app. You can do it on your own. There's many ways to do it. And then each, and we do a reading. There's a daily reading. And you just do the reading and do the work of that day. And then maybe it's a 20 minute reading and maybe 20 minutes of journaling. So it's not, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages. It's a few pages and then some questions. And then we meet up and check in. That's the setup. Now, whether it's successful or not depends on, like she said, the discipline to do the work. And I also think we're all maybe here for different reasons so there's an opportunity when you start anything is to set an intention for that thing and we used to say uh, we had a formula at, the, at yoga one we would say intention plus action equals transformation when you set an intention before you do something or at the beginning of something it goes differently than when you don't set an intention Right, you've all had that experience. Like, I'm gonna go and do it, and you have a really well thought out plan, and this is what I want to have happen. This is what I want to experience, and then you go into it. It changes the experience. Let me give you a quick example. So, you know, when I worked in an office, I don't think any, I don't know if anybody still works in an office right now, but when I worked in an office, you know, I would have a long day and lots of stress, and I would drive home. And then if I was still in that work, stress, traffic state, and then just burst into my door, and then maybe my kids are you know, yelling and every, you know, it seems like chaos and I'm in a grumpy mood. And then my, the experience of my kids is that I'm grumpy and irritable. And now I don't, I don't have a good connection with my kids when I come home when, and with my wife and all that. And they're, you know, I'm just, I basically came in and brought negative energy into the house. Or if I pull up in the driveway and I pause for a second and I take a few deep breaths and I say, my intention when I go in is to connect with these people that I love, my family, and, and be open and receptive to their energy and to connect with them, make them feel loved. And now I go and open the door. That's a whole different experience. And the difference was I set an intention and then I acted on it versus I was just kind of going through my life on autopilot. So what we're gonna invite you to do now is Albina's gonna lead you through a meditation. It's a great opportunity at the beginning to set, what are your intentions for the next 21 days? And, it, and what would you like to see happen in the next 21 days? And when you set an intention and you put your energy into it, that's what you're going to get. So you want to take over? Yeah, if I may add a few things about intention. Raja and I have been doing this work for a while now. And in the beginning, my intention for programs like this would be, you know, I want to feel good. I want to step into my ultimate health. Maybe it would be like, oh, I want to lose a couple of pounds, you know, or I want to eat clean and healthy. And now my intentions are so bigger 
than anything that I've done before. It can be anything like, I want to take my intimate relationship to a completely new level. I want to have a love and romance filled relationship. Or it can be, I want to open up to flow, the flow of money, the flow of abundance into my life. I want to heal myself. So ultimately, the more you do this process, the more you set the intention, the more you, you know, commit in, to the discipline of doing the work, the more you start experiencing the miracles and the bigger your intentions become. If I'm making sense, give us some jazz hands. Everybody's like so serious. And a lot of you don't even have your cam cameras on. If, if you're listening, just turn on the camera. We'd love to see your beautiful faces. If you feel Yay, so here we go, Roberta. Hi, hi, Chiana. Hi, Charuta. Here's Jana. Look at that. You guys, yes. Turn on the cameras. Let us see you. Awesome. Yeah, so let's, let us do a short meditation that will help us all connect to our intention, ultimately to our heart's desires. What is it that we want? And also this will also qualify for your day one meditation. <laughs> Yay. So let's go ahead and do that. So sit up tall, make yourself comfortable. And if you have a chair with the back, back and close your eyes. And exhale all the breath out of your lungs. And now take a really deep inhale. Enjoy your breath. Open your mouth and exhale. Inhale deeply, lifting up through your chest, lifting up through the crown of your head. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Relax your belly, relax your face. So breathe deeply right now and simply enjoy and savor your breath. Maybe first time, grateful for your breath. That fills you up with energy, with vitality. If you wanted to, your breath can make you fall madly in love with your life. We've been given this tremendous gift, a gift of choice, free will. So right now, choose. Choose to enjoy your breath. Choose to be madly in love with your life. And breathe in this truth with every choice that you make. You get to shape your destiny. You showing up on the Zoom call on a Sunday afternoon is you committing to shaping your destiny. So right now, just take a deep, juicy, feel-good breath and celebrate that. I showed up. It's a big deal. So right now, I want you to go on a little journey with me. So imagine yourself 21 days from now, three weeks from now, and you're looking back to today and you look at yourself making a choice, making commitment right now to do the work.
So at the end of the 21 day journey, there is a version of you that is healthier, that is stronger, more confident, a version of you that has fully embodied the flow, the flow of ease, abundance. There is a version of you who is kinder, more loving, a version of you who is madly in love with life. There is a version of you who is what I call a master manifester. So right now, allow yourself to, you know, play with your whole one days from now. You've done yoga every day. You've met meditated every day, one day. How does that person look like? How does that person feel like? How does your life look like in that point in time? Embody that person right now. You in the fullness of your power, healthy, strong, confident, abundant, madly in love with life. Embody that person who have mastered effortless ease. That person for whom everything is fun and easy. So right now, feel that person in your own body right now. Maybe even move your shoulders a little bit. Yeah. Like you're romancing that person. Yeah. Seduce that person to become you. <laughs> or you become that person. Make it fun and easy. What is it that you want to get out of this program? And right now I invite you to make it not just a you know, cerebral process. It's not you just thinking. Take a deep breath into your heart right now. Sense it with your heart. What do you want to get out of this program? What do you want? Love, abundance, health, joy, ease. What is it? Creativity, fun. Stay connected with your breath. Maybe even move your shoulders a little bit. Open your eyes. And write it down right now. Set your intention for your love revolution. 21 days to create a life you love. What is it that you want to get out of it? Fine. Right. My intention for the next 21 days is that's a good prompt. And the second prompt, leave a little space. On my journey, I create. 
on my journey I create, and that's a little space. And then another prompt could be, I choose to learn to love and savor the following areas, the following things in my life. That's a prompt. I choose to learn to love and savor the following areas of my life. And then the last one could be three things I create on this journey are just similar to the last one or the one before last. All those will work for you. So just spend the next few minutes writing. Breathe deeply while you do that. And we'll play some music to get you inspired. Um, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed connecting with each other and had time to talk. And if you didn't, um, great opportunity because what we're gonna ask next is who wants to share with the group? And there's, there is power in declaring your intentions and, and not only declaring it, but saying it out loud has a certain power to it. You know, um, when we, you know, when you get married, you know, people ask me, what's the difference between like living together and getting married? Well, when I got married, I declared in front of everybody I knew and loved and God in the universe that I was going to do X, Y, and Z, right? That's the difference, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so that means like when things are tough, um, I, I, we work it out, right? Versus that's the difference. And, you know, um, having an idea and then declaring an intention. So with that, is there anybody who would like to share with the group and we'll see where it goes and anybody, anybody? Intention is to create a greater awareness of my love for myself and all the relationships around me and to see where I can like love deeper and more fully. And then also to look at what the obstacles are or the limiting beliefs that I have that are blocking my love and um, to develop my morning routines around that so that I can have greater self-love. Um, and then probably just like intuitively like feeling into my heart center during my meditation times and just allowing that energy to expand. Awesome. Well, I love that all of them are around love since this is love revolution and we're getting close to Valentine's Day. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being brave enough to share out loud. Um, you know, what came up for me is that, and I think you, you maybe are already tuning into it too. It's like that saying, and I don't know if it's Rumi or someone else that said, you know, our, our work is not to seek love, but to find and break down the barriers to the love that's already there, right? And where, where we're not receptive to it. Because the truth is we, we all have access to great love in our lives, the people around us, um, you know, higher power, if you believe in that, the universe, God. And a lot of times we're just not open to it. Can I add to that? Mm -hmm. So today, many of you joined us for the live class in Houston. And, you know, we haven't been in Houston for four years. And this today, this morning's class was our coming home, so to speak. So every person who was in that room was like, what, 50 people in there. I know that every person who was there are the people that love us deeply. And I caught myself just you know, just practicing yoga, to be honest, and just making sure that the music was right, the microphone was on, everybody could hear, like, I was, I kept, you know, just being boggled up with, I don't know, the logistics, and then at some point, I had to consciously choose, okay, Albina, let the love in, like, the love, I knew, I knew that this whole room is filled with so much love and I wasn't letting it in. Mm -hmm. So there is something to be said about consciously choosing to let love in. And I think Charles, your intention is kind of like that, right? 
love is already all around us. It is again our choice, our free will, us exercising free will to let that love in or to recognize love that is always with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a choice. And when I actually did it this morning, I just, I felt it and I just lost it because I was so moved by the power and the beauty of love. And that to me was a moment of epiphany and transformation on some level this morning. And, you know, Charles, you're, you've done yoga a long time. You're pretty tuned in. You'll, you'll, it, when you're really aware, you'll realize, oh, I'm, I'm actually blocking this off. It's I'm choosing in this moment to be guarded or to be not receptive. <clears throat> and a lot of it is a lot of the work around allowing love to happen is to see when we're to feel, to be present to those moments. Cause we'll, I mean, when we're really tuned in, we're like, Oh, I'm totally creating this wall right now. Someone's wanting to connect, you know, someone's trying to share with me. Someone's, telling me something and I'm right or internally right I don't want to go there because I might not see what I you know if I, I, I'm not willing to dig around in that fear or whatever it is and so I'll put a compartment around it and that can be the work right to, to feel it and to consciously like she said mm -hmm. as much as you can it might only be a little bit but then over time you're like practicing it right um, so thank you for sharing. May I do something else? Mm -hmm. I, I would, I just want to expand it beyond just Charles. Mm -hmm. Love is the highest order there is. Mm -hmm. Love is the most powerful thing on this, in this universe. So love, like Roger said, you know, love is divine love. So let's say you are, your intention is about health or your intention is about abundance and more money, or maybe your intention is to get a new job, something very practical, guess what? The moment you open up to love, the most powerful energy there is, the highest order there is, the moment you open up to love, the moment you give love to others, you open up to the flow. And whatever that flow is, in any shape and form, healing, Love as an intimate relationship, love, love is in the form of financial abundance, love in the form of creative flow, love in the form of opportunities coming like an avalanche into your life. It all starts with the intention that Charles, that Charles spoke about, the intention to open up to love. All of it is love. Uh oh. Yeah. I hope. Amen to that. Um, Thanks. Thank you, Charles. We got time for one more. I see Vonda's hand. Does that mean you want to share? I can. I did that at the beginning because I'm the hider. So I oh, okay. I Great. Come out. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> um, my intentions is um, to get more grounded. Um, like I shared with the group, get more grounded. Because a lot, a lot has changed and a lot is going on and we're about to move. And so I just want to get more grounded and get into the flow. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to get more into the flow of yoga. Um, not just do us periodically this day and that day. I want to get into the actual flow so I can actually reap the benefits that I know my body and my mind and my spirit's going to get. Like, a, like all of it to connect. Um, and um, I wanted to... Um, just get in the flow of listening. Like you said, uh, Charles said, uh, more aware, mm -hmm. um, asking myself questions, like you said earlier about sitting in the car and setting attention. So for me, it would be asking questions, not just reacting, um, taking the time to sort through that before I make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, so listen to my spirit more in that, mm -hmm. consult with myself. I find a lot of times I don't consult with myself, I consult with others when I should be consulting with myself first. <laughs> um, so yeah, get more grounded and just, just release the past, which is in trusting myself. I feel like yoga actually connects all of that together if I just get into the, a deeper yeah. flow. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. Vonda, um, all, and all of you, this is really great that Vonda said that, you know, um, sit grounded, right? Like you say, okay, I want to be more grounded and I want to listen to my spirit. Let me ask you this. If you were grounded, if you felt really grounded and you felt really connected to your spirit, what would that give you access to in your life? How would that change your relationships to yourself, to others? So I'm asking you now for you. Mm -hmm. For me or just for everybody? Well, for you, but I want everybody like to see themselves in you. Like we say, I wanna be grounded, but what, what would that give you access to? I'm, assume you're grounded, like you were feeling grounded. What would that give you? Like, I wanna be practical, right? Like what, how would your relationships change? I think I, I know, well, I don't think, I know I would be, I would be less judgmental. I would have less fear. I would be more loving. Yes. And then, um, what, and then what would happen in your, in your relationships if you were less judgmental, less fearful, and more loving? I think things would, things would flow for me and I would be more accepting of what's happening in my life and not look at it as a bad or a negative, but know that it's a part of life and it's a flow of life and it, it's all about my perspective and what I think and how I react. Yeah, so I, I think that's what it would do for me. Yeah, and are there particular people in your life whose relationships with you would improve, like particular people? Yes, my family and my mm -hmm. children. Yeah, right. To make it really practical, like when I'm grounded, when I'm connected to my spirit and I'm not being fearful and judgmental or, or less so, and I'm coming from love, my relationships with my children are gonna blossom. And then that is, that's a, that will motivate you to step onto the yoga mat when you don't feel like it. Because exactly. that's what, you, that's ultimately what you want, right? And so the hardest part of yoga is getting on the mat. And so when you say what your intention is, it, it's got to be powerful enough to get you over the hump of not wanting to do yoga today. <laughs> I want to have really amazing relationships with my children. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I get on the mat and I do this work, my, I get grounded, I'll get connected to spirit. And then I'm going to be this completely differently energetic person for them. And that's going to change my whole family dynamic. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yes. <laughs> She's shaking her head. And that's what I want all of you to see is like, this is what the stakes are is that, you know, grounded sounds awesome, but what does grounded mean? Mm -hmm. You know, how is that going to reflect in your life? Because if I feel grounded, then I'm calm. And I'm going to be like, when, when somebody comes to me upset, then I'm going to be a force of, of, of calming and grounding versus I get back upset. So then you get to be, you know, you get to be an anchor in your relationships. I want everybody to see that. So, you know, it, all those things are great. And, you know, think about how the practical impact in your life of, with the people and the places and the things and the areas where you are already, how is that going to change and improve? And hence the power of intention. <laughs> Make your intention so sexy. So like, oh, I want it. That on the days and you don't feel like showing up, you actually get off your butt and you 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 do the work. Thank you, Vonda. Yay. Um, okay, so we're about at time. I just want to give you a quick overview. Just I'm just gonna say really quickly what's the what's the last bit is just a reminder, we're gonna send you an email with this recording. Read up to and including day one. That's the most reading you'll ever do is this very first bit and then do the work of day one. If you, a lot of you've already practiced yoga today, done. Meditated today, done. And then if you do that, what we're calling soul work in the book, day one, then you'll be caught up. Um, and then tomorrow you'll get up whenever it works for you, pick a time that's going to be good for you you know, put it in your calendar, yoga, <laughs> meditation, 
doesn't have to be yoga. It could be, I'm going to go outside and take a walk in nature, meditation, five minutes, and then do the work of that day. Read, do the work every day this week. Come Sunday, we'll see how it's going. Yes, and to make it easy for you, I will send you an email with a few yoga classes that you can practice, as well as recorded meditations so that you have no excuse. (laughs) You do the work. (laughs) Well, it's an honor and a privilege as it always is to do this work, to do it together. Look around on your screen if you're in gallery mode. You know, this is a good, solid group. And actually you're the ones that showed up for the thing. You know, we have lots of people sign up for stuff and not everybody has follow through. And I know that you will be exceptional in that. We love you. It's so amazing to see your beautiful faces. Get excited. Get in a state of positive anticipation. As I like to say, expect a miracle. I promise you, if you do the work, a miracle will show up. Amen. We'll see you in a week. Bye. Bye.